当风吹来第一粒沙子。When the first grain of sand was blown by the wind. First, we lost a few sunny days. 伊拉克首都巴格达及周边地区被沙尘。Then a few plots of fertile farmland. 阿联酋已经损失了大约三点三万。全遭沙漠化的区域。Next, rows of houses, even entire cities, were buried beneath dunes. Resources ran out, and wars broke out. Finally, eliminated by sand were nations and civilizations. This is not a sci-fi movie, but a pattern that has been repeated over thousands of years. To avert such disasters, humanity has chosen to declare war on desertification. The desert behind me looks tranquil, yet it is a giant that's extremely hard to control. Once woken up by gale winds, it darkens the sky and can swallow a city in just five minutes. This is the Kubuqi Desert, the seventh largest desert in China. Sprawling across the northern Ordos Plateau, with an area of approximately 14,000 square kilometers, resembling a massive sand basin, it lies just 800 kilometers from Beijing. This place once stood as the front line in the battle between humans and the encroaching sands. Initially, it was a series of guerrilla attacks. In the 1950s, the Kubuqi Desert in Ordos crept toward the Yellow River by dozens of meters each year, threatening to sever the flow of the nation's mother river. In the 1980s, this area experienced over 50 sandstorms annually, with sand encroaching on grasslands and farmlands. As a result, people were forced to move south to protect their homeland. The farmers and herders of Ordos carried seedlings up the mountains, planting trees along the desert's edge. However, the desert relentlessly pressed forward, making it difficult for the saplings to survive. These efforts failed to tame the dunes. A single shifting dune could erase everything. How could we prevail? The answer was to fix the sand. China introduced its prototype tool, straw checkerboard sand barriers. From that point on, the campaign shifted from guerrilla warfare to positional warfare. Today, in the desertification front line of Ordos, we will replicate China's answer to desert control. Here, we simulate shifting dunes on a table and use these desert willow branches to build our sand barriers. Set them at 10 centimeter intervals to form neat squares on the dune surface. That is how you make straw checkerboard sand barriers. It is simple to deploy, but powerful in effect. Let's switch on the fan. Without checkerboards, loose surface sand is blown off onto the table. With the grids in place. The sand is far harder to blow away. The grids increase surface roughness, slow near-ground wind, and force lifted grains to settle. Now they run on a treadmill. In this way, the dune is stabilized. What's more, as wind passes over the grids, it blows grains to the edges, creating small bowls that trap moisture, further stabilizing the surface. The grids can be made with upright straws, as we just showed. In practice, they can also be laid flat or made with nylon mesh. Yet, battling vast deserts and strong winds, such barriers require ongoing human maintenance. For a more sustainable lock-in, the best approach is to give the net a self-healing capacity. Introducing biological sand control. Remember these sand bowls in the middle of our grids? They create better microenvironments. With water jet planting, drought-tolerant species take root. Their roots halt moving dunes and gradually replace yellow with green. Here in Ordos, a new sack-like device is introduced—a hybrid sand barrier system. It packs microbial agents and seeds. In spring, seedlings sprout, fixing sand while restoring and improving the soil. With these barriers. We have stabilized this one square meter of dunes, but what if we face more than 100 million mu of sandy land? Since laying the first checkerboards more than six decades ago, China has effectively treated 118 million mu of desertified land. A Chinese toolkit, such as aerial seeding for afforestation and closing deserts for forest and grass regeneration, has taken shape, flexibly combined to hold the line. Still. Sand is inexhaustible, while manpower, materials, and funds are finite. The struggle with sand is a prolonged tug of war. How can we stay the course? 
The answer lies in the blue sea behind me. In the Kubuti Desert, the net that restrains the desert also serves as a supply line, turning a sea of sand into a green opportunity. Here, annual effective sunshine exceeds 3,000 hours. Long dune belts are ideal for large-scale photovoltaic arrays. On 50,000 mu of sandy land, 200,000 solar panels have been installed. They produce 2 billion kilowatt hours of clean energy each year, which is transmitted to Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region. Beijing and Hebei province. That's enough to power 1.2 million households for an entire year. Together, they act as a vast sand fixing net and a giant sunshade. Above, the array generates 2 billion kilowatt hours of electricity each year. Below, evaporation drops and more moisture stays in the soil. An ecological cycle takes shape on sand. In the Kubuti Desert, there are 13 more solar power stations like this one. They not only stabilize sand dunes and restore the land, but also create 50,000 stable jobs for local communities every year. By 2030, a great wall of photovoltaic, 400 kilometers long and averaging 5 kilometers wide, will rise along the desert's northern edge. That will mark a milestone in the long campaign against desertification. The government, enterprises, farmers and herders working together to integrate sand control, power generation and shared prosperity. That is the Ordo's handbook for combating desertification. It has not only transformed this desert. This Kobuchi model, endorsed by representatives from 191 countries, was included in a UN declaration in 2017, offering the world a solution from China's experience. Looking back at the dunes, they are no longer a fearsome giant nor a grave of civilizations, but a neighbor we can understand and live with and a resource we can put to work. As a Chinese poem says, a belt of newly planted willows stretch for miles, bringing hope over the once desolate border. Sand control is a belief carried by our nation across a thousand years and a mega project to safeguard our homeland.